Why doesn't He bring world peace throughout the world? Why doesn't He fix the broken family relationships around us? Why doesn't He take away the depression that we struggle with in our lives? Aren't those good things to pray for? Aren't those things that holy people pray for? They're not self-centered. They're not self-absorbed. So why doesn't God say yes to those? Why doesn't God immediately fix those things? And admittedly, I'll tell you right now, I don't have an easy answer to that. I don't have the perfect answer to say, well, check, check, check right here. Original sin certainly is what causes these things in our lives. But to say this is why would require me to know the mind of God. And who can know the mind of God? But I do know that sometimes God allows us to go through things in our lives, difficulties, that sometimes He doesn't say yes because He's using it as an opportunity to teach us and to instruct us. He's using it as an opportunity to teach us to come to Him more in prayer. Did you hear in Luke 18 today? Jesus desires that we persevere in prayer. The words He uses is that we never grow weary, that we never go tired of praying. And I think, I think that part of that is that, that part of that prayer life is when we go through these awful times, that our prayer life is built up because we, we know that we can't count on anything in this world. We know that we can't trust on things in this life to provide. And so we do rely on prayer. Praying. Praying should be like breathing for us. It should be like taking in air. We need air to support our lives. We need prayer to support our lives. If someone stops breathing, well, they'll live very shortly. When we stop praying, when we don't take time to build up our prayer lives, we put our faith in jeopardy. Satan uses those times to attack. Satan uses those times to come against us. Those times when we are low. And that is when, that is when we need God the most. When we are in the greatest temptation, that is when we need God the most. Prayer is the first line of defense. Prayer is warfare. We may not think of it because it is words that we say to God, but prayer has power in it. When Jesus uttered the words from the cross, when He said, Father, forgive them, those words were not just powerful because He said them as the Son of God, but when He said them, they were powerful they were powerful because God is the God who created this world. God is the God who sustained this world. God is the God who redeemed us. And God is the God who makes us holy each day. And God is the one who has all things in His control. And the God who has all things in control is the one who hears our prayer. Because Christ did indeed die on the cross. Those words, Father, forgive them, were not reserved strictly for the people 2,000 years ago. But as we stand at the foot of the cross, as we kneel before God in prayer, as we kneel before God with our trials and, tem and temptations, as we kneel before God with our thanksgiving and our joy, He hears our prayers. And because He is our Creator, and because He is the one who sustains us and the one who redeems us, He is the one who can answer those prayers. He is the one who can provide. And so yes, sometimes, sometimes He doesn't say yes to our prayers, but only out of love. Only out of His fatherly goodness and love, He doesn't say yes. But that doesn't mean He wants us to stop praying. That doesn't mean He wants us to stop persevering in our prayers. Because like that widow, who over and over again went to the unjust judge in Luke 18, God is not unjust, but He wants us to come to Him over and over again. He wants us to develop that relationship with Him. To talk to Him not just about our needs, but about all things that are going on in our lives. Like I said, it should be like breathing for us. Even as Paul says in 1 Thessalonians, pray continually or pray without ceasing. Be joyful always. We have that opportunity. That wonderful, wonderful opportunity to pray. And maybe at times we're not sure what to pray for. Or we feel like we shouldn't pray for something. But God invites us to pray for all things. God invites us to pray for even the small things, the, the silly things. You know, with the kids this morning, we talked about, you know, sometimes when we ask our parents for things, uh, PlayStation, uh, PSP. And 
The thing is, that even God hears those prayers. He doesn't ever ignore our prayers. Now again, He may sometimes say, not at this time, or no. But that doesn't mean He's not listening. Or that He stops loving. Because as His sons and daughters, who were redeemed in the blood of the cross, as His sons and daughters who had that message, Father, forgive them. He hears our prayers, and He has an inheritance set aside for us. He has an inheritance to bring us to heaven with Him. And as we pray, we pray in defense. We pray without ceasing. Paul's words in Philippians chapter 4, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. Because although He knows every request that you bring to Him before you say them, He wants, you, he wants that relationship with you. He wants that time with you, that time that you take with Him. And if you're not sure how to pray, He's given us the Lord's Prayer. The prayer that He gave us so long ago in Matthew chapter 6. He gave us that prayer so that even when we didn't have the words to, that we didn't know the words to say, we could pray to Him. And even when we can't utter those words, as Romans 8 reminds us, the Holy Spirit intercedes on our behalf and hears the words of our hearts. God wants that intimate relationship with us. God desires that relationship. So never fear praying to God. Never fear that you've prayed for something too much or too often. Never fear that He's not going to listen because God hears your prayer. And God wants you to pray to Him. He wants you to have that relationship with Him. Today, to close our sermon, I'd like us to pray together that prayer which our Lord has taught us. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be Thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, be with your hearts and minds now and always. Amen.